Hello. In this video I want to summarize Lineage 2 interlude market. And I want to do that because there is not that much information on the English speaking internet. Uh, and it's very difficult to tie it all together because Lineage 2 has many different versions. So I want this uh, presentation and PDF. I will export it to PDF to be the place where a relatively new player can go into and uh, check all the processes that they want to check uh, regarding the market and how the economy works. This will be like all-in-one solution for all of that. And I want to start that uh, with a very short introduction into Lineage 2, what Lineage 2 is, and a short introduction into some of the basic mechanics. So for that, uh, we should proceed uh, to the map. So this is the map for Lineage 2 Interlude, and I'll be talking about Interlude specifically here because it's very popular Chronicles, even though it's kind of similar to Chronicles 5, it's somewhat similar to Chronicles 4, but it's unlike anything that comes afterwards. Uh, Lineage 2 was released in two, uh, initially, in one set. This is like the summarization of that first set. The second set starts with the Kamail Chronicles, it adds a uh, Kamal race and some of the new mechanics, it uh, starts deviating from this first set. But the second set is still considered the traditional lineage too. Some of the popular chronicles from that set are Grazia Final, Grazia High Five, but I'm not sure about the pronunciation of those. And a short word about pronunciations. I've been playing Lineage 2 for like 15 years, but all of those years I've been playing in Russian, so some of the names I'll butcher, some of them I'll try to keep close to how I think they were supposed to be pronounced, So, but I think they will be distinguishable for you anyway. So what is Lineage 2? Lineage 2 is a game where you grind mobs. Uh, you don't level up with quests, you just go outside and kill mobs, for example, we zoom in into Gluden Village. One way of leveling would be when you're like level 10, you just go outside to this windmill hill and you kill mobs here. This is all you do until you level up. Then you go Gludio, you go Ruins of Despair at level 15, you kill mobs here. This is how you level in Lineage 2. As you can see, it has many different locations, it has many different towns. Between the towns there is a fast TP, but it costs money, so uh, for example, to go from Gludio to from Gludin to Gludio, it will cost you like I think three thousand, something like that. And because of that, there are some implications for the market. So, uh, in terms of the market, each town has its own, let's say, trading space uh, where you can trade. Uh, it's not defined uh, officially. It's not defined. Some servers define it so that uh, there is more like leeway between the traders, so that it's easier to navigate the town. Let me show you how it looks like. It looks like this. Uh, basically, you just sit down, let's look at this jetta. You sit down with the trade, uh, you can either sell or buy. Uh, you can also do the package sale, uh, but it's pretty much the same as sell, uh, except you sell all that you list. So you sell, you set up the price, you set up this, this storefront with limited characters, uh, you just sh briefly explain what you want to sell. You sit down like this, many servers allow offline trading, so on this server you see these purple names, it means that the person is not actually online, he's not actually sitting here, uh, he just installed this shop, typed the command into the chat, and it closed his client, but his character remains in game, only in this, in this like, uh, selling position. Officially there was no such thing, you had to trade by yourself, all by yourself, uh, but this is a very handy thing that the private servers have, so that you can like, uh, have your like, empire of traders while playing yourself, basically, without having a ton of windows opened. So you sit down, and you sell or buy, and what implications does this have, comparing to the modern systems with the auction house and trading post and stuff like that, is that your trading becomes position-based. So, for example, 
It is very common for players to establish zones, like areas, where a certain item is being sold. For example, you can see here, somebody is buying crystals here, sea crystals, another person is buying sea crystals, somebody is selling SSC. So, for example, you can just uh, remember this area as being the area where people trade crystals and SSC, for example. And every time you're in the town, you don't have to search all of the traders. You just, just come to this area and buy specifically what you need. So the trading becomes position-based in every single town. And players, it's, it's pretty much up to players to decide how they want to uh, separate the town into areas. So what implications does this have for uh, the town system? So there are many different towns. The TP between the town costs money, and this is very important for the economy, uh, because, for example, the trading, let's say, um, mega town is uh, Giran, and uh, if you want to sell something uh, using Giran prices in Dion, you have to move there somehow. You either need to walk there, which takes time, or you need to TP there, which takes money. And likewise, if you want to sell something from Dion or Giran in Gludin, it will be even farther. So it will be more expensive here. Uh, and it will be accounted for all the traveling, all the taxes and stuff like that. Now that I mentioned uh, taxes, let me explain briefly what the castle system is. So you see that uh, there is Gludio Town and Gludio Castle. Giran Town, Giran Castle. Dion Town. Dion Castle. So not every town has its own castle. Some castles control many different towns, but in general, it's like pretty much one to one, uh, almost. So what is a castle? Castle is a initially when the server starts. It's an NPC controlled area, and you need to siege it. Uh, you need to sign up for the siege. You siege it. The clan that takes the castle becomes the owner of that castle. And the owner of the castle can set up taxes in the cities that the castle controls. So for example, Giran Castle controls the town of Giran. I think no other town. So uh, when Giran Castle set up taxes, all the NPC shops in Giran Town get taxed. And I think 60% of that tax goes back to the castle, but it's not very significant. Uh, the, most, the other most important thing about the castles, other than tax control, tax control is very important uh, because, uh, yeah, let me just uh, just get into it. So basically, every town has a base tax. So for example, Gludio Castle controls these towns. They have 20, 20, 15 percent tax. Grand Castle has 10 percent tax, and the castle owner can add up to. 15% tax to this number. Uh, this tax affects only the NPC shops, but this is very important because the economy relies heavily on NPC shops. So as you can see, for example, uh, Giran Town has the lowest tax among all other cities, but since uh, the, the castle owner can add up to 15%, uh, for example, between Dion and Giran, if the Dion Castle owner decides to add 0% and Grand Castle owner decides to add 50%, it will make it so that Dion Castle becomes actually cheaper than Grand, uh, Grand Dion Town becomes cheaper than the Grand Town. I have uh, shown this process on this. Uh, let me hide the images for now. On this uh, presentation, like so. So there is a default value. I explain it here. Here is the castle, and if the castle for that particular town is taken, then you use the castle tax. If not, you just use the default value. And this tax affects grocery shops and weapon shops. But we've started a little bit like from bottom up, so let's go back to uh, just discussing lineage 2. So trading is uh, town based like this. But leveling is also town-based. So, for example, from Giran Town, uh, this area uh, is like level 40 or even like level 35 to level 
all the way to 75. But it doesn't mean that it's the only place or the most popular place on the map where you'll be leveling like this. But you need to consider that. For example, uh, if you want to sell some low uh, grade consumables in Oren, you will not be able to do so because there are no low level locations for Oren where you could like make profit of all of those consumables. And the consumables I'm talking about are soul shots. Let's just go to soul shots and spirit shots. Uh, let's start from here. Uh, let me turn off the images. So every time you auto attack, you use a melee spell, you consume a soul shot. It's uh, not mandatory, but it's kind of mandatory because all of the locations, all of the power levels, they are scaled according to the to the use of these shots. And likewise, every time you cast a magic spell that has no magic power, you can use uh, spirit shots to increase your cast speed. But if the spell relies on magic power, you should use uh, blessed spirit shots to increase your cast speed and the magic power on the spell. I will tell you straight up that spirit shots, non-blessed spirit shots, are not very, uh, are not in high demand. They are very rarely used. Only supports use them, usually for some high-level weapons because they are cheaper to craft. But usually eventually everyone ends up using blessed spirit shots because even supports have uh, abilities that rely on magic power for example sleep uh, mana drain all that kind of stuff it relies on your magic power so eventually you will you will end up using blessed spirit shots as well so how are these uh, shots used i have uh, an image somewhere here okay let's use this image okay not the best one okay here for example when you read the description of any weapon in the game, it will say uh, it will have these two lines: soul shots used, spirit shots used. How do you read these lines? Uh, every time you auto attack, uh, you use two soul shots. Even if it's a dual sword, you attack with both hands. You actually use two soul shots anyway. And every time you cast a magic spell, you use two spirit shots. Now every single weapon in the game. Uh, has these two lines. So these consumables, they become very, very important. Everyone uses them, everyone buys them, and therefore they're in a very high demand. And let's start with them. Uh, so for soul shots and spirit shots uh, degrade, they're actually just uh, shop controlled. So we apply the tax to the shop. We buy a degrade weapon, uh, or armor actually, doesn't matter which one. You have specified here any equipment, then you crystallize it and it becomes decrystal. So crystallization is something uh, gnomes do, dwarves, gnomes. At level 20, uh, the gnome that uh, becomes a blacksmith, so I think the first profession is called artisan, can crystallize degrade at level 20. Crystallization works like this. It's a skill that you use. It appears in your inventory. You just click on it, and then you click on the item, you confirm, and it becomes crystals. So any D great equipment becomes crystal. I said any equipment because uh, it's balanced so that pretty much all the equipment uh, produces the D great crystals of the same value. So if you buy like a, an equip, a piece of equipment that costs like 1000 and you buy a piece of equipment that costs uh, one and a half million, uh, the amount of decrystals will be different, but their cost, like cost per crystal, will be the same. Then uh, you use the same artisan, the same gnome. At level 20 you need a recipe, you usually buy them or get them yourself uh, to craft these. Each one has uh, its own recipe, uh, usually they're obtained by just dropping them. So in crafting these, you are, if you click on this dependency here, you use Soul Ore and Spirit Ore, which are also purchased from the NPC shop, which is also controlled by the tax. So let's uh, reiterate on this. Uh, 
a little bit. Let's uh, go to the map. So, for example, if you have a gnome artisan level 20 and you want to make degrade soul shots, for example, if you buy all of them in Gludio uh, with the castles uh, not being captured, so we apply just the default tax. The default tax will be, I think, 30%. Uh, let me see. The default tax will be 20%. So you buy your degrade weapon here with 20% tax, meaning it's 20% more expensive for you. And then you buy your soul ore here as well, which is also taxed, which is also 20% more expensive. And then you craft your soul shots, and they will end up being more expensive. Sometimes it's a significant value, for example, instead of like being, instead of costing you uh, 14 adena to produce them, they will cost 15 adena, but sometimes it's very significant, it can go like uh, plus 10 adena per item. So you do all of that here, and you sit down and sell them here, and they will be more expensive than in the town of Dion, where taxes will be lower, and they will be even more exp they will still be more expensive than in the town of Giran, where taxes are the lowest. And we are talking about producing consumables that are produced and sold in uh, hundreds of thousands an hour. So, for example, if, if there is one person leveling in Dion over here, uh, he will be using around like uh, 5,000 soul shots an hour to level up. And if there is like, let's say, 10 people, only 10 people, which is a very small amount, that usually there is more people, uh, he will, they will be using 50,000 soul shots an hour. So these are the consumables that are produced massively and sold massively. So all of these tax manipulations, they really matter for them. So how do you go about it? Uh, the degrade leveling locations are usually Gludin, Gludio, and Dion. Usually the trading hub for degrade stuff is Dion. It's the lowest tax of the three. But if you want to sell, for example, uh, your degrade soul shots in Gludin, you have to move them over there somehow. Some servers have the mail system from the later chronicles. Some of them, some of them don't. So if they don't, you will have to account for the TPs. And speaking of TPs, there are some shortcuts that you can use. Uh, there is an item called uh, Scroll of Escape that uh, teleports you to the nearby town. So every town has a zone around it uh, that will get, uh, that will make the Scroll of Escape teleport you to that town. And for example, here's a life hack for you if you want to go from Gludin to Gludio. Uh, the regular TP costs around 3000 but the scroll of escape costs like 500. So you can TP to abandoned camp. You'll be TP'd over here. Uh, the TP costs also 500. Uh, then you run up a little bit, I think up to here. And then you can do the scroll of escape. You'll be teleported to Gludio. And it will cost you 1000 in total instead of 3000. You can optimize your traveling like this, but it still costs you money to travel between. Uh, these locations and it has effect on the economy. So soul shots degrade will be more expensive in Gludin anyway. Right, let's go back to the soul shots here. So I've explained the process for the degrade. Seagrade is a bit more tricky. So uh, as you can see, it uses C crystals. And if you go by the analogy with D crystals, you need to get C grade equipment and crystallize it, and you get C crystals. But uh, there is no C grade being sold in the weapon shop. The weapon shop only sells D grade weapons. So the trick here is to jewel, and you jewel two swords. Uh, I've written here it's it it should be either a pre top D grade weapon shop. Or the top degrade weapon shop and by these tops i mean the best available in a shop uh, because the best available in the shop is not actually the best obtainable so let me show you how it looks like you've seen this one already you go to the blacksmith in uh giran 
you bring him two degrade swords, as you can see here. You pay him degrade crystals that you can also get from the shop. You pay him some Adena if there is a castle. This is a tax Adena, actually. I think. Uh, maybe there is a small uh, fee if there is no castle. So you bring him uh, these swords, uh, you combine them into a C-grade dual weapon. And it doesn't matter how powerful it is, it actually is not powerful, it's the lowest, like, available. But what's, what's important is that it's C-grade. And when you crystallize C-grade, you get C-crystals. And that's how you get C-crystals here. Then it's all the same, you craft, uh, you need level 40 for this, uh, and you need a recipe for each of these, uh, which is purchasable or obtainable by yourself, uh, and then you just craft them and sell them. Likewise, in crafting, uh, soul shots and spirit shots are used in addition to using the crystals, so it's also taxed by the grocery shop. Sigrate soul shots and spirit shots are actually some of the most popular ones, some of the best sold ones, especially the spirit shots, and I'll explain why I'll explain why later. So let's go to the uh B grade. You can see the process is I I've tried to organize it so that it's simple, but the process is actually getting even more complicated than that. So in Giron Town there is a luxury shop. Luxury shop is a shop that sells you C grade items. I've sold before that the weapon shop doesn't sell them, but the trick here is that you still need C-grade crystals, so you still need to go through this uh, process, and then you can uh, buy stuff in the luxury shop. And because of that, the C-crystals that you produce from uh, crystallizing these jewels is still a an item on the market that you can sell, especially uh, you can just sit down in the luxury shop and sell them there. And likewise with the D crystals. Uh, so all of them aren't just for making spirit shots. There are, there are items on the market by themselves. And this is a very important point that I will return to a bit later. So how do you make B grade crystals then? Uh, the process here becomes even more complicated uh, because it depends on which stage the server is currently on. And I separate these stages as uh, being the castle stage and the no castle stage. Every server, if, if, if you start on a new server, it starts with the no castle uh, stage. So it means that the castles aren't captured. And this is very important. When it's a uh, castle stage, the process becomes a bit different. So what happens uh, with the B grade crystals? You buy these C grade swords usually by Sword of Delusion anyway, like whichever uh, stage the server is in, uh, you need uh, C-grade crystals and D-grade crystals. So you need to go through this process anyway, and you need to go through it uh, if you want to make it the most profitable, because people who are crystallizing and selling the crystals themselves, they add some uh, cost to them. So they will not be the initial cost that the initial cost of the production of them. So in order to get uh, these two sorts of delusion, you need to go through this process of buying degrade weapons, jeweling them, uh, and then bringing enough crystals here to buy the sorts of delusion. You buy two of them, and the process becomes a little bit different later on. So you buy these uh, C-grade weapons here, and then uh, you dip down, you see this very weird dip, we are dipping down to the blacksmith of Mammon, and this is an unavoidable part of making B-grade crystals. I will get into the uh, Mammons a little bit later, uh, let's just, uh, I'll just tell you that you have to interact with this person, a uh, person NPC, to get, uh, to exchange your luxury sea weapon into a better one. And then you go up, 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 up to this process. Uh, top C sword, uh, not necessarily. It depends on which stage uh, the server is in. So if the server is the, is in the no castle stage, then you are unable to obtain dual craft, dual crafting stamp. Let me see. I forgot the name. I'm sorry. 
Doll Weapon Crafting Stamp. Uh, this is the item that you can only obtain from the castle shop. I will get into that a little bit later. But if the server is in a no castle stage, then you need to use Stones of Purity, which can only be spoiled or dropped. Uh, spoil and drop only. We'll get back to the Stone of Purity a bit later. It's a very important resource because it cannot be obtained through Manor as well. So anyway, let me show you the menus here. So if the server is in the no castle stage, you go to Aden, Aden town, and uh, you jewel to Turugi like this using Stones of Purity. Why Turugi specifically? Because it doesn't have the avail it doesn't have it available to duel the two sorts of delusion here. So you have to exchange them to Turugi uh, using Blacksmith of Mammon, and then you duel them using Stones of Purity. And if the server is in the castle stage, then you can get yourself on this uh, dual sword craft stamp, and then you can duel Swords of Delusion directly. So it simplifies the process. You don't have to go to the Mammon to make B grade crystals anymore. As you can see here, uh, you jewel two C grade weapons. They become a B grade weapon. Then the process is the same. You crystallize them. It requires a level 52. You get B crystals, which is an item by itself. You can sell it by itself as well. Uh, because many people craft themselves uh, soul shots, but I'll get into that a bit later. And then you craft them. I think the level is 52, not 51. And you need a recipe for each of them. And you craft the shots. Now at this point, it's very important to realize uh, that uh, these three uh, shots are the most demanded items. And C grade and B grade are, the are in the highest demand. Uh, why is that? Uh, I will show you because interlude has this mechanic with the shadow weapons so you can buy a shadow weapon all the way up to b grade uh, using just a dana from a regular trader in the weapon shop so everyone who wants to use a b grade weapon can get themselves one and shadow weapon is a limited time weapon for example b grade weapons i think they last two hours and then they disappear so every two hours you need to pay 100 Adena to buy the weapon itself. And likewise, you can do with the C grade weapons, but with C grade weapons, you also have, uh, if the server has this implemented, this should be implemented, but not all of the servers have this, uh, is when you finish your first profession, you get Shadow Item Exchange Coupons D grade, and you can exchange them uh, to a D grade weapon. And when you likewise, when you finish your second profession, you get uh, C grade coupons and you exchange them for the C grade weapon. Uh, you can exchange them uh, at uh, any NPC that changes your profession, uh, or not, not, not necessarily your profession. So, for example, uh, gnomes get their professions changed in Warhouse and in Blacksmith. So, in each of those buildings, there will be this NPC. Priest uh, classes get their profession changed in the church. Uh, you can go there, there will be this kind of NPC as well. And you just choose the dialogue and exchange coupon coupons to the shadow weapons and you get them like this. So it's very important here because you can do this up to B grade. So up to B grade, all the shots will be in a very high demand because everyone will be having a, so to speak, up-to-date weapon. This is also one of my theories that some of the old chronicles in Lineage 2, I haven't played anything earlier than C4 in my life. Well, I played C3, but I was very young back then, I don't remember anything. So this is one of my theories that back then Lineage 2 only, had, only was up to B grade, because this kind of sophisticated process just completely ends with the addition of A grade and S grade. So for A grade, uh, you just need A grade equipment. It drops, you can craft it, but usually people uh, crystallize the dropped ones, the shitty pieces that they, they don't want. And another source, which is very important to the server, is getting your A grade equipment from the subclass quest. 
So when you are doing a subclass quest at level 75, uh, I think one of the first quests, uh, you go after Bayum, you turn in the B-grade crystals, and then the guy asks you to bring a B-grade weapon, top B-grade weapon, and you turn it in, and you get a low A-grade weapon. And then you can crystallize it and get the crystals and uh, get your money back for crafting the B-grade weapon like this. So for A grade, likewise, you need a recipe, required level, I think, 56, I may be confusing, I forgot to look this up, so excuse me for that. And for S grade, all the same, except you don't have this subclass quest thing here. People just crystallize stuff, S crystals, craft, you need a high level blacksmith, and you craft them. But I would say the majority of the economy will be in these three uh, short grades. So D grade, C grade, and B grade. Now, previously I've touched on uh, Mammons, so let me explain you the seven signs system. I've connected it to the castles. It doesn't have a direct uh, interaction with the castles, uh, pretty much, but it has a like indirect interaction server-wide with the castle system. So what is the seven signs system? Uh, it opens the passage to catacombs and necropolis. Uh, these two places, in terms of mechanics, they are not different and all of the players just call them catacombs. In these two places, you can farm ancient Adena. Uh, but actually you drop uh, seal stones and then you exchange them for ancient Adena. And I've had an image here with the layout, let me show you. So this is the example layout, but all of the uh, catacombs work like this. Uh, so they're, separ uh, they're separated in four different categories by difficulty. So when you just enter, this is the lowest difficulty. Then usually there is the second, the third, the fourth. And in each segment, usually there is a progression in terms of uh, level. So the further lower right you go, the higher level the mobs become, and also the more seal stones they drop. In catacombs, uh, there is no Adena drop almost. Uh, there is one type of mobs that doesn't participate in this like war uh, between the shadow and darkness, and it drops some Adena, but it's very little. And the primary objective of going here is to farm seal stones. Uh, you exchange seal stones for ex for ancient Adena. A bit later, and it actually depends on the current stage of the Seven Signs event. Let me explain the Seven Signs event to you uh, in brief. So basically, there are two opposing factions, Down and Dusk, and every person who wants to participate in this whole thing needs to register themselves as one of the sides. And when they register, we, they choose one of the three available seals. So when you sign up for a specific site and a specific seal, uh, you enter this uh, event, you could say, and based on which site controls the current seals, uh, it is decided whether you can enter uh, catacombs or you cannot. The event progresses in cycles, and each cycle c consists of two weeks. One week is the week of battle. During the week of battle, anyone can join catacombs and farm some seal stones. But during the week of victory, only the victor side can join catacombs and necropolis. Here I listed some of the effects of each seal winning. So for example, if the seal of avarice wins, uh, there appears some raid bosses that are required for SA crystals and the People, for example, here the Army of Dusk won this seal, so the Army of Dusk will have access to catacombs. Then the seal of Gnosis, it has some buff debuffs in towns, it's just an annoyance, it's not a major mechanic, and it has a necropolis access. Uh, if you remember here, there are separate catacombs and necropolis. So, for example, in this screenshot, very good screenshot, here the uh, loads of down actually on the seal of gnosis so it means that in this current stage when it turns into the week of victory 
the army of dusk will be able to enter catacombs but they will not be able to enter necropolis which is a bit strange but that's how it is and then there is a seal of strife which nobody really uses uh, uh basically in short if you if the lords of dawn win it then the castles can hire higher great gods for their castles uh when it comes to sieges and if the dusk wins then the castle is limited to lower level gods but nobody really uses the seal of strife usually everyone signs up for the first two seals uh so why is it separate the catacomb success and the necropolis success they have no difference mechanically but they have access to these different uh mammons so since objectively the uh, blacksmith mammon is the most important one usually everyone signs up since it's in the catacombs everyone signs up for the seal of avarice so how does this progression work so you drop seal stones seal stone exchange as you can see here if it's the week of battle uh, in the cycle then every seal stone that you turn in uh, goes towards uh, your army let's say your side of this particular seal so for example if i'm signed up for down seal of avarice and i turn on my seal stones this bar will go up and this is how the winners are decided whichever bar is higher wins this seal and another way of increasing the points is the festival uh the festival is like a uh, you could you could say it's like a group dungeon where you go you choose the difficulty and then you kill mobs uh to gain points it's usually a very fruitless exercise because it requires an entire group uh usually a group of like five to nine people and the experience there is not the best but some people use the festival to level up on the new servers because all of the other spots are just taken and they don't want to bother with it so why is this so important for the economy uh because uh whichever side wins for a particular seal will have access to catacombs and necropolis and the mammons and this uh interaction with the mammons is very important mammon of blacksmith appears in catacombs randomly it jumps jumps every hour i think or maybe even shorter i don't remember it jumps between different catacombs randomly and you need to search for him he offers you these services you can jewel a grade and s grade swords into a grade and s grade jewels this is the only place where you can do this when you, we discussed jeweling previously you could jewel this in ed adan and oran but this is the only place where you can do this for a and s grade then a very important service c grade exchange uh, i will show you a bit later then uh, it inserts uh, sa crystals into a and s weapons which is also very important and it uh, offers unsealing of a and s items so let's go one by one uh jeweling quite simple you just bring him two swords you bring him ancient adena dual weapon crafting stamp and it jewels that for you so c weapon exchange very important me mechanic uh for the following reason first of all to produce crystals if so you've seen that before but also because you can get some very important secret weapons like homuncle sword uh by just exchanging a luxury weapon so secret is separated into four categories a uh, luxury shop offers you the lowest grade here this stonebringer you can exchange it one to one to any other low grade weapon then a uh, luxury shop offers you a mid grade c which is sword of delusion you can exchange it one to one to any other mid grade c or downgrade it you can downgrade it back here and likewise you can upgrade stonebringer into the sword of delusion uh if you want to but there is no point uh and then you can upgrade sword of delusion which is the best uh, item in the luxury shop into the top c weapon using ancient adena and then you can exchange uh for the alternative for all the top secret weapons here 
So why this is so important is because uh, you can dual samurai long swords, for example, into the best uh, available, not not the best available, the best B grade uh, jewels, but they are not the best available, but they are the best because uh, when you enchant them to plus four, they have uh, an attack speed bonus. And another important item in this is the homuncle sword. It's extremely important item in interlude, and I'll touch on that a little bit later. And then there is this uh, insertion of SA. I'll maybe explain it to you a bit later. And the when it comes to the merchant of Mammon, he is a little bit less uh, important to the server, but it's still very important that he exists because he sells you the best dice. And I, I've written here symmetrical stats. It's because uh, every die that you can buy in a grocery shop, in a die shop, uh, they all have plus, for example, four minus five stats. And this is very important because the merchant of Mammon actually sells plus four minus four and plus one minus one. Whereas in a shop, you can only obtain plus one minus three, I think, is the best die that you can buy. And then it also sells A and S crystals to get started on the A and S shots production. And crystals are also needed for some other stuff. So it's uh, kind of a backup plan if none of the server drops any A grade items, nobody is doing raid bosses or stuff like that. As you can see, all of this built on ancient Adena, all of these uh, services and items they cost ancient adana so it's a very important item that people buy and sell as well so every server will have a lot of people who buy ancient adana who sell ancient adana and it's very crucial that there is an active let's say participation in the catacombs and people are farming all the stuff so that uh, others can buy it and stuff like that is a very essential part of the economy so why is this like seven signs stuff is so important as well? Is because, for example, the current server stage is pre-castle, so the only way that you can create B-grade crystals is by exchanging uh, weapons in the blacksmith mammon and then dueling them. So you need a mammon blacksmith over here, but he only appears in catacombs, so only the winning side of the Avarice seal will be able to enter catacombs. So for example, if you are playing like the antagonist of the entire server, you can backstab the entire server by spamming the festival for this particular seal and make the entire server lose this seal. And you will be the only ones with the access to the blacksmith mammon and you will have the monopoly on big red crystals pretty much. Now it's not so perfect because many people register for both sides uh, as a backup plan, but uh, it's possible. This interaction is possible and it's very cool, I think. So let's touch a bit on the SA crystal. SA crystal, uh, every secret weapon and higher has its own set of uh, SA. SA means special ability. And in order to get it into your weapon, uh, you need SA crystal of the appropriate level. And up to, I think, B grade, uh, you need only up to level 10 of the SA crystals, so you just buy them in the luxury shop. Uh, but you need to level up, level them up on raid bosses to level 13. And I think level 11 is low grade, uh, low A grade weapons, level 12 low, high A grade weapons, and level 13 is S grade weapons, if uh, I remember correctly. So these uh, special abilities, they usually something like faster casting speed or higher crit chance, something passive. They are not active abilities. So now that, now that we've touched on that, let's discuss the castles. So I've mentioned previously that uh, you siege the castle, you gain control, control over it, and you become its owner. So what happens next? What happens next is that you can set the tax rate and you can check this tax rate in any shop. The last uh, available option is usually check the tax rate. And it will be written here who is the clan leader and what clan is it and which uh, 
territory this town belongs to, as well as, well as the current tax rate. Now this tax rate is only the castle set tax rate. So if you if you go back here, for example, in Giran it's a ten percent base tax. So if the castle has fifteen percent here as well, in this menu only this value will be written, the custom uh, the custom tax. So next, uh, castles gain access to two very important things: castle shop and manor. Uh, they are very interlinked between each other because everything in the castle shop. Uh, costs you crops. And let me explain what manor is. It's a very important mechanic to the economy of the server and in general. So if the server is in the pre-castle stage, uh, this manor is not available. And if it's in the castle stage, castle owners may choose to engage with the system, but it's not necessary that they will do that. The best possible scenario for a, let's say, top group uh, would be to engage with the system actively and abuse it to generate a lot of resources, but it's not necessary that it will do that. So it's up to the castle owners to uh, use mana or not. So what is mana? Uh, mana is a castle system in every town uh, which is controlled by the captured castle. There is a mana manager that sells seeds. Uh, seeds are consumable items that you use on a monster that you are killing and you plant the seed into the monster and then after killing it it produces a crop. There are some chances depending on the level, on your level, on the level of the monster and stuff like that. But the most important thing to know is that if the monster is uh, X, like X2 or X4, means that uh, its experience and HP pool is multiplied by 2 or by 4, then the number of crops that you can get from one seed will be also multiplied by that number. And in catacombs, I, I don't think I've mentioned it, in catacombs and necropolis, all of the monsters are times 4. So they are all uh, 4 times as big, as difficult, and give as much experience as the normal, mo as the normal mobs, and likewise, they give four times as many seeds as a normal mob would. I'm sorry, crops as a normal mob would. So players produce crops like this uh, by turning it in. I will show you on the screenshots. And then crops. You can sell them, you can trade them. Uh, usually people don't do that, but if they fail at manor, you can just sell your crops uh, if you cannot turn anything in. And by turning in your crops on the player side, you get resources. Uh, the table of resources is quite big, you get almost all of the resources, but one thing is very important is that you do not get stone of purity. There is no way to get stone of purity, and as we've discussed before, stone of purity is very important for jeweling and creating big crystals. So even though it's a post-castle system already, castles are already taken, uh, it's still very important that you can uh, get stone of purity from the here and I'll explain uh, why a bit later. So let me show how this works. Lots of uh, data here. So briefly, on the left this is seeds that you use on the monsters, uh, this is crops that you get from the monsters, and then the castle configures uh, the mono intake, the crop intake for that day, particular day. And for example, the castle, uh, for example, Gludio that controls the town of Gludio, uh, basically, it can choose to take in red coda crops, these crops, and give the players the reward of either, I think this is varnish and this is coax. So they choose which reward will be given, and they they also choose the price. Now the price is not a dena; it's more like the, the word price, this translation of price, and then in Russian as well, uh, it's a wrong word. The better word to use is a value, the value of one crop that you turn in. There are some limits uh, to how high the value can be, but if, for example, the castle owner chooses not to actively engage with the mana, they can be setting these kind of low prices, as you can see, 50, 250, 350, these are low prices and 
they will be just passively generating generating crops for themselves but nobody will be actively farming all of that because it's, uh, the prices are very low and on this screenshot it's uh, two independent screenshots don't confuse them this price for example is very high 12,000 it's a lot and I will briefly tell you how to calculate how much uh, like you're looking at this menu and you want to know how much uh, resources will you get for your turning in the crops so basically there is this reminder it's how many crops you can yet turn in it's trivial to understand uh, then the max price which is uh, here by the max price i meant the price that the castle has set so here for example 12,000. here are the calculations reminder 360 castle price 12,000, and then the base price every uh, resource in lineage 2 has a base price and there are websites where you can look this up uh, here on this website i'll link it in the description you just hover over the resource and it tells you its base price so the base price is uh, 1200 uh, you divide it by 1200 and you get this number 3600 this is how many cokes you will get by turning in 360 crops now here is like the rewards are a bit different there are different resources but i've made this example for the cokes so the calculation will be exactly the same you just need the base price for reward number two which is mold glue and the base price will be like four thousand i think something like that but basically it's like this uh, you just calculate and you can turn in and get 3600 cokes like this and it's a lot and this is why this entire system is so important if the castle owners actively engage with the mana you can bring a lot you can generate a lot of resources for the market and it completely kills the spoiling system now there is uh, two professions that every gnome can go it can go blacksmith or spoiler and the spoiler can get uh, additional loot from the mobs and usually it's resources and it kind of kills the profession more or less uh, you can still spoil some stuff i'll tell more to later and the next important part uh we've we've, we've just described the player perspective so you get a lot of resources for that light right, right on your side but you what you give to the castle are the crops and why is this important is because uh Hmm, I'm pretty sure I've had a screenshot somewhere here. Hold on. Okay, the screenshot got lost, unfortunately. So, in the castle shop, everything costs uh, crops, particular type of crops, uh, and some of them are done, I think. And two of the most important items in the castle shop are dual weapon crafting stamp which enables this entire system of making big crystals here and if the castle none of the castle owners actively participate in this they will not be putting out a lot of these guys into the market which means that dueling the weapons using stones of purity is still rele relevant it's still the only profitable way now if the castles actively participate in this system they put out lots of these uh, they usually become cheaper than dueling them with stones of purity and uh, you should be stocking up on these if you're making lots of big rate uh, shots and the second most important item that the castle shop produces is secret Bo book of giants it's an item that you bring to your skill trainer and you enhance your skill you basically improve its power so for example the power of your skill is like 72 and then you enhance it uh, plus one power and you get uh, plus two power in your soul tip pretty much uh, there are many different uh, aspects in how you can enhance your skills for example you can enhance power you can enhance uh, duration of something you can enhance uh, the chance of it uh, working on the target stuff like that it's a very important late game uh item that all of the like top level groups will be using a lot well, they will all be enhancing all their skills and it only comes from the castle shop i think there is also like a quest or something for this but it's uh not a reliable source and in addition to all of that it also sells, sells some uh enchantment scrolls uh d grade c grade b grade 
they are quite profitable to sell. So for example, if you're doing mono, you calculate all, the, all of this stuff and you bring out lots of C-grade enchantment scrolls, which are the most profitable to the market. You can make some money, even if your castle is kind of like small, like gluting castle or something like that. And it sells some potions. Uh, and now that we've dis uh, described this mana system, uh, let's look at the map once again, because it's very important. As you can see, there are like ne necropolis, catacombs, catacombs, necropolis, and they all belong to these territories. For example, this necropolis of sacrifice belongs to Gluden village. And it means that uh, the majority of mana that will be done by the players will be in this necropolis for the most part and it's very important because uh, not all towns have access to let's say useful kind of necropolis that people use a lot for example uh, this necropolis of sacrifice is low level it's like level i think 20 to 30 something like that so the seeds that of this particular level in gluten village are not very useful in this necropolis the level 30 seeds, they are not very useful, and this is why the value of the Gluten Castle is kind of low. And another example, we're going back to the Giron Castle, the very important castle in the game, if not the most important. Uh, this catacomb of the Branded is level 40 to level 50 catacombs, and the seeds for this uh, level range are very, very profitable. They bring up very, like, Lots of very valuable resources. So the manor in the Giron Castle, or rather the crops that you will be using in Giron Castle, can be obtained in these catacombs. And it's very important uh, because it becomes very profitable to. I think the seeds that you can produce in these catacombs are the ones required for the dual sword crafting stamps. These ones exactly. So whoever owns the Giron Castle can produce lots of dual crafting uh, sword stamps and then they can just enable uh, mana for this seed range and make it turn in and set up the price and stuff like that and they can make lots of like passive money by doing this so this is pretty much why the castles are so, like the uh, which castle you take is so important the uh, most like valuable and profitable castles are Giron castle and Aden castle and for the late game, people prefer Godar Castle or Rune Castle, uh, whichever one of these, uh, because it has uh, special teleports to all the end game locations. They are not very profitable. Uh, for example, the dominating alliance on the server will have two clans in them, and one clan will get the profitable castle, like Giron Castle, and the other clan will get the end game castle, the Godar Castle. Uh, and in this Godar clan, everyone will be like, like the majority of the highest level people will be in this clan because they'll be using all of these teleports and the dummy clan of the alliance will be controlling Giron Castle and it will be just an, like an economy based clan that will be managing all of those manor things, manor things and stuff like that. So this is why castles are so important. By the way, I have said earlier Gludion Castle, it doesn't exist, actually it belongs to Gludio. I've made a mistake. So let's move on. Uh, this is the castle shop. The most important produce using crops, which pro which players produce and stuff like that. It's a very important part of the economy uh, because after the castles get enabled, it's the main way of how you are getting resources for crafting. And crafting requires lots of resources, as you can see here, for example. Crafting every piece of uh, equipment, it doesn't matter if it's a, if it's an armor or a weapon, it requires a recipe, some keys, and lots of resources, gems, very important gems, gemstones, sorry, and crystals. So the number of resources here is huge, like this is 140, but uh, 140 crafted leathers are actually made from like thousands and thousands of animal skin, and like simple leather and stuff like that. So you can produce all of those resources using mana system. And I've touched on it uh, earlier. As you can see, you are crafting the sealed dark crystal rope here. And every 
not every armor, but every like popular armor in the game has set effects, and that's primarily why people are crafting them. So these set effects are not active when any of the items in the set are sealed, and you craft them sealed, and then you go to the uh, mano of blacksmith, and you unseal them here. This service that he provides, which is why he is also very important to the late game persons, uh, late game parties. So moving on to the, I would say I've, I've outlined some of the most like uh, important items to the economy that I haven't touched on before. So uh, I've touched on shots and crystals; they are extremely important. But let's briefly go over these important ones. So D and B grade keys for crafting, uh, they are spoil only, and some of them are needed. For example, for the subclass quest, you need a top B grade weapon, so it needs to be crafted, even though most players will not be crafting B grade weapons, uh, because you can just buy a shadow weapon. And then A grade and S grade, you can get them from spoil, from quests. They're also very important to the economy. For example, all of the best uh, equipment in the game is A grade, except for the weapons. The best weapons are actually S grade. So, an, an example here Dark Crystal Rope is the best uh, equipment for mages, for the battle mages, and it's A grade, not S grade. S grade rope is actually kind of low key useless for battle mages, it can be used in some cases. It's more useful for Overlords, Warcry, stuff like that. So you get those uh, recipes and keys from spoiling and quests. D to B grade recipes are only for drops. Uh, from drops, uh, there are no quests, I think. Maybe I'm missing something, something, but there is nothing important, really. A and S grade ones, uh, there are some important quests. For example, the quest for jewelry in hot springs and stuff like that. So most resources uh, that come from Manor, this arrow comes from Manor, uh, mainly comes from Manor still, but there are some quests and drops. For example, in the pre-castle uh, stage of the game, when Manor is not available, there is a uh, high demand on these items. This is a Enri, I think. There is also Azov, which is used for, I think, jewelry. And there are also molds. I think they are within this Maestro Anvil lock. They can be obtained with quests, uh, one of the most important quests in Valley of Science. It's very profitable because you can just choose the reward over there. Then moving forward, we have uh, quest items. Oh, sorry, I've sp skipped books. Uh, so an interlude uh, to learn any skill, you need a book for that skill. And to get it, you need to drop it. They drop in specific locations and people just sell them, basically. And the lower level books uh, you can get from the vendor in towns and uh, very important in the ivory tower. Not many people know this. So some people just go to the ivory tower and then buy lots of books there and then just resell them in Oren because not everyone knows that there is an extended library of books in the ivory tower. Moving forward, quest items. There are many different quests. For example, the warehouse uh, quest, the coins like. Uh, Golden Viver and stuff like that, Silver, silver Unicorn. Uh, then the subclass quests, the uh, Mimis Elixir, all of the regions for that quest are also in high demand on the market. The Nobles quest, I think, uses the same one. And the Life Stones, uh, drop only, you can see them often as well. Fishing proofs, uh, fishing only, they are needed for extending your inventory, extending your uh, weight limits and and warehouse space and stuff like that. And then we get to the particular items like Carmen gloves. Uh, you can get Carmen upper body and lower body in luxury shop. They're actually purchasable. But for this set, you need Carmen gloves. As you can see here, you need Carmen stockings, which are these, and then Carmen gloves, which is this. Uh, and these ones are only craftable. And to get uh, the recipe and the keys, you need to do the warehouse quest, which is why uh, selling warehouse quest items is quite profitable. And you need to spoil. I think you spoil the keys. And also look out for the people. Uh, here is a great example who sell the so-called 
Carmian set, but they also sell boots. As a, and you, as you can see here, boots are not included in the set. So the set is only gloves, top and bottom. And why this set is so important is because it's giving casting speed, and it's very important to all the supports, mages, like pretty much everyone will be wearing this until they get their hands on a dark crystal rope or blue wolf uh, rope for support. Next on the list is plated leather boots, the exact same situation, very good C grade uh, set, and it requires boots that you cannot get in the luxury shop, likewise they are only crafted, and you just drop all of the keys and recipes, and likewise people sell gloves for some reason, even though they are not required in the set, you should be on the lookout for this one. Then there is a Valley of Science uh, quest that I've mentioned earlier, if the Server in the pre-castle stage, these are very important items uh, on this quest, very profitable. And then, yeah, let's discuss why the homunculus sword is so important. So, I've mentioned it over here, uh, that you can get a best, the best available uh, sword in the luxury shop, which is over here under the image, luxury shop, you get it, sword of delusion, and then you go to the mammon of blacksmith, and then you exchange it to the homunculus sword, and this is very important, the sword, uh, because it has a essay that gives it, it uh, casting speed, and it gives 15%, and for every item in the game, for example, that has an SA that gives casting speed, it will always be 15%. Uh, even if it's an S-grade item, like an Arcana Maze, or if it's a C-grade item, like the Homunculus Sword. So why is this item so, so, so important? Is because you can enhance it to level 5, for example, to plus 5. So all the enhancements up to level 3, up to plus 3, are safe. Nothing will happen with the weapon. And starting with plus 4, the chance is 60%, and it goes lower and lower and lower the higher you go. So if you go to plus 5, it will be the same as the Valhalla Sword. If you go plus 10, uh, Valhalla Sword is a B-grade sword, which also has acumen in it, so it's comparable to Hamunkel Sword. So basically, plus 0 Valhalla Sword with acumen, which you need to craft, which you need a higher level crystal for, is the same as plus 5 homunculus sword with a cumin that you can get from luxury shop. The crystal you also get quite cheap from the luxury shop. And the you can insert it uh, outside of Mammon even. You can just insert it in town. So it will be equal in magic attack, but it's a plus 0 sword. You should take note of that because plus 3 Valhalla will have a slightly higher uh, magic damage. So, plus 10 is equal to Som, Sword of Miracles, uh, a great weapon with a Kuman as well, very difficult to obtain, and you just can get plus 10 Homunculus Sword like this. Plus 14 is equal to Arcana Maze, as great weapon with a Kuman, top, top weapon for all of the mages, and stuff like that. So you can uh, dump, you can like invest in Homunculus Sword, you can enhance it, uh, and it will be using C grade. Uh, shots which are very uh, inexpensive compar comparing to all of these like B grade, A grade, S grade and you can invest in homunculus swords and sell them. I think I've had some images here, no I didn't, they all disappear somewhere, I'm not sure. Uh, maybe there are some here, probably not. Uh, either way, uh, you just invest in homunculus sword and then you just sell it. And it's a very good weapon. For example, Homunculus Sword plus like 16 will be better than Arcana Maze plus 3 uh, because it will be using C grade so shots, so it's much less expensive to use. But on the other hand, it's very difficult to en enhance it to uh, plus 16. The chance is very low. When you break the weapon, when you don't meet the chances, you don't roll the dice, the weapon breaks and you get C grade crystals and get less of them compared to just crystallizing the weapon. This is a very important item for the economy. It uh, creates a uh, demand for the C-grade enchantment scrolls for weapons. Uh, it creates demand for all the crystals and it brings some crystals back. 
and it creates like people who buy these swords they continue buying cigarette shots and stuff like that so it's a very important item next are majestic recipes uh, that you can get from beast farm very important late game location and you get there uh, you get them from spoiling there so it's one of the locations that keeps the spoiler profession alive pretty much because you can only get this stuff from spoiling uh, and the other bit that uh, keeps the spoiler alive is uh, some of the like end game uh, S grade and A grade pieces that you need to spoil in a group. Usually it's like a five man group, it's a whole ordeal. So previously, before the castles, spoils can be like a single player character that you use. You just go outside, spoil, bring in some resources and sell them. But after the castles, after the mano, uh, spoilers are very like they're very specific in what they are doing because everything else just doesn't bring any profit pretty much and some of those uh, things require an entire group so it's uh, it's kind of like it becomes very high level and another item like towards the high end of the game is as great jewelry recipes you can get the a uh, recipe from hot springs quest that doesn't even require any fighting you can get it on like level 40 character pretty much just run around and sell the recipe and you get some uh keys for it from end game locations like ketra varka and stuff like that so it's a these like uh, keys and recipes are important to the economy as well so this is it i think for the overview of the economy now you should have a pretty good understanding on what's seven signs, what is castles, how to make crystals, why mammons are so important, why catacombs are so important, uh, what is mana, what is castle shop, or what are some some of the most used items on the market. And this is it for the economy section, I think. Next, I wanted to give you some examples of how to make money if you are just starting on the server regardless of its stage. So regardless of the stage of the server, the best way to make money is to kill monsters. <laughs> there is no better way to get yourself started. And for that, you need uh, to get yourself either a mage that can AoE farm or a melee character that can AoE farm, for example, in catacombs. It depends on your setup. So I'll just go over some of the setups here. So let's discuss some of the setups. If you are playing completely alone, what I suggest you do on a interlude server, and all of this discussion was for interlude, it's not applicable to other chronicles, is to go necromancer. Uh, now it's a very common misconception that necromancer is an expensive class to play because his main ability at level 40 requires you to use cursed bones, and cursed bones cost a lot. You need to get them from Hardin's Academy that has an extra tax in it. It's not taxed by the castle and it's like super expensive. Everything is expensive and it's a complete misconception. Necro is like the best uh, class for interlude by far. It's a complete powerhouse. It levels up as a mage. Uh, it AoE farms starting from the second profession. It's uh, very useful in the late game. For example, in any mage setup, Necro will fit in because it has some debuffs for magic defense uh, and it's like on par in terms of crit. Uh, it's like in terms of magic crit, which is a very important in interlude, it's between dark elves and uh, light elves. So it's like it's in between, it's the middle ground. So it can actually still compete in PvP. And critical ma magic crits are very important in interlude, interlude very broken mechanic. You can just destroy people out of nowhere because you just magic crit them, you just deleted them from the game with one spell. And uh, how do you play solo as a necro? So you level as a human mage, then you do the second profession, and then you need to keep leveling until level 44, I think, maybe 43, 44, I think. Yeah, mages level up at four levels. So level 44 is when you get the corpse explosion keep leveling as you leveled on the first profession to level 44 this is the only difficulty and then you get corpse explosion and basically 
uh, there are like groups of mobs uh, with half HP. Uh, there are many locations. Let me show you here. For example, when you just got uh, to level 44, you can go to Tana Canyon. Uh, it's a location with half the mobs. Uh, then you progress from there. When you get to B grade, you go to Sky Shadow Middle. It's like B grade location. Then you move to the Ancient Battleground and you spend here like up to like level 70 even 2 I think you just spend a lot of time here and then uh, this kind of leveling kind of stops and you can go to hot springs up to level 76 and level with uh, uh, CDL curse that link so uh, this is how you level as a necro you just uh, there are like groups of mobs uh, these like dots you just run around them gather them up all into one place you just like stand here wait until they all come to you then you uh, use vampiric drain which is a free ability on one of the mobs to kill him for example he'll be like oh here you kill him and all of the mobs will be around him and then you use corpse explosion on him and you delete this entire like group of mobs this uh the target limit i think is 10 targets but i'm not sure so what happens here, why is this so important, is because uh, you used only two casts of your abilities, right? You ran around, and then you casted uh, the Vampiric, and then you casted the Corpse Explosion. So you used only two uh, Spirit Shots to kill this many mobs. Yes, there are half mobs, but if you like combine them, every pack will be consisting of like two and a half mobs, usually on average. So you pretty much used two abilities, to kill like uh, let's say like six mobs for instance and this is very very profitable this will make you a ton of money you'll be droning in money uh, by the level 50 you can actually afford to buy valhalla blade which costs like about like 10 to 12 million on uh, on the next one server uh, by the time you reach big grade level it's that much money so this is why i suggest playing solo as a necro because i can level like this and my second suggestion would be going the dwarf way uh they're called gnomes in lineage 2 so this is a very complicated way of doing this so the idea here is such you start as a gnome uh you level up uh you can get some of the initial money in dune hills on uh, wolves here uh it can get you started on some of the degrade and then you just level up uh, on half mobs in uh, fields of silence, I think here, up to level 40. And they basically do the same thing as I just described with Necro. You just uh, get lots of uh, mobs together and then you cleave them uh, with this spear. And uh, spears have a cleave of three targets by default. Uh, I think maybe more on a gnome because gnome has a passive for the spears so basically create a gnome uh, you cr you made it into a crafter so you go artisan then blacksmith you will level up like this uh, you stop it at level 40 uh, and then you get yourself another gnome and the second gnome will be your spoiler gnome and it's kind of a difficult way of doing this so basically you just level another gnome you uh, go to all the locations that are required to get uh, yourself some uh, soul shot and spirit shot recipes i think in ruins of despair and then uh tima code posts uh, stuff like that you do all of that you get all the recipes for your crafting gnome and then you start produ producing c grade shots and this is how you get started on the server you can do this until you're basically a billionaire uh, but it will just be it, it'll just take a very long time and why you need a second gnome is because I think the SSC recipe is spoiled in is only spoiled in Timok Outpost. But basically you can just buy it. Uh, but also another reason why it's, it needs to be a gnome is because uh, when you get all the recipes for your crafter, you should de-level your gnome. It will be second professional ready at like level 43. And then you de-level it to level 15. And this is a very important level because uh, you can get a newbie buff at level 15 the full newbie buff with the what is called the cubic that heals you 
vampiric, all, all of that good stuff. You get newbie buff in a city up to level 15, and then uh, you go to the... where is it? It's here, Hardin's Academy. You start a quest to uh, level an imp. This quest is uh, for removing your uh, PK points, but this imp, it uh, cancels all of your experience. So you go here, you get this imp, you start it up, uh, you get the newbie buff, you go to this necropolis, and then you get yourself like some degrade gear, uh, even even token gear, even the coupon gear that I've described here, it will suffice. You get yourself a degrade spear, you go to this necropolis and you farm ancient Adena here, and you will be stuck at level 15 because you block your own experience, you will be permanently buffed, you don't need a second person buffing you, so it's a solo solo kind of activity. And you go here and you uh, just train all of the mobs, like uh, you, you go to the fourth section and you go like uh, from the big room, you go like this medium room, the small room and then this big room, and then you stuck yourself into the corner and kill all of them. And it will be e very easy for you because you are de-leveled to like level 15 pretty much. You will have, you will retain all of your abilities and stuff like that. It will be very easy. And you find, farm lots of ancient Adena. So we'll have two things going on for you. You'll have SSC trader and crafter that you can craft. You can leave it on a macro, on a clicker while you're at work, uh, in school, whatever. Even when you're sleeping, you can just craft, craft, craft. This is not allowed by the service, but nobody checks it. You can just craft on a clicker. Just make sure to use something like auto hotkey and randomize your delay, then they will not notice anything. Uh, and the other thing, the active thing you will have going is farming ancient Adena here. And doing these two things, you can actually become an, a millionaire. You can actually uh, get yourself some top A grade equipment, which costs like 300 millions, 400 millions in like a month, basically. It'll be very, very, very profitable. And then you can start any character you want. You will have uh, all the equipment that you want. With all the money, you can find maybe some friends to play with. Uh, maybe you can play alone. Then you can start, for example, a support character and just play with people. Or you can start like a mage, for example. Like I said, a necro, it can level up to as great alone completely. So these are my suggestions for solo play. And then a duo to trio play in terms of economy you will not be doing any of that stuff i suggest you just go uh destroyer jester then you go um support let's say support i'll explain why support and another melee character usually it should be a crafter this is what i suggest if you're going with the melee setup if you're going with the mage setup uh, then you go mage basically you go support once again i will explain why i mean what i mean by support and i suggest a blade dancer so this setup is kind of like detached from the economy uh, except for one thing is that you will be doing the quest in valley of science a lot even if it's the post castle meta you will still be doing it a lot and it's pretty much detached from the economy, it's just a setup that I suggest. And this one will be heavily implemented in the economy because you'll be just doing catacombs and necropolis all the way to as great level. You'll be just uh, gathering mobs and killing them. And as for this support thing, I've mentioned support. So there is two supports, very important, Shilin Elder and Elven Elder. I'll explain briefly. So Shilin Elder, you should know that this is a dead end support. This support has no value in the end game, absolutely zero value. It's replaced by all of the other supports. For example, it gives empower, uh, but uh, on the third profession, uh, Overlord gets empower, and it gives uh, uh, vampiric. But Warcryer at level fifty eight also gets vampiric, so it gets completely replaced by all of the supports. But up until that point. This is the best support. This is kind of the paradox of Shilin Elder in Interlude. Up until there, it's the best support, but then it gets completely replaced in the end game. So, 
uh, in that sense I suggest going Elven Elder because it scales the best into the end game but in the early game it's kind of useless it doesn't have absolutely anything it's pretty much useless but it's very useful for an end game it has party recall it has uh, clarity and stuff like that and another option for this melee group specifically is to go Warcrier VC Warcrier so you will get uh, Vampiric only at level 58, but up until then Warcrier can kinda heal people. It's not uh, guaranteed and I just suggest going Warcrier and Crafter. If you go Warcrier, I suggest you go Blade Dancer here instead of the Crafter. And uh, you will lose the Crafter, you will lose all of the, all of the profit from soul shots and stuff like that. But uh, it will be much more like synergized with you if you go Blade Dancer here as well, if you are going Warcrier. But if you are going, for example, uh, Shilin Elder here, then having a crafter is very good because you can uh, give some mana to the crafter. Crafter use mana uh, to craft stuff, and so it will be more synergized like this. So this is for two and three people setups, and for let's say four plus, none of that will be implemented to the economy. But the, having the group itself is very profitable because you will be leveling, let's say. For a 5 people setup, you'll be leveling 5 times as slow. So by the time when you reach like, let's say level 55, uh, you will be having 5 times as more Adena as you would otherwise have if you have leveled solo. So this is like by itself uh, the way of generating Adena. And because some of the uh, people in the group don't need any equipment, for example this Blade Dancer, can be in no grade pretty much except for the jewels up until as great so it can have zero gear at all in a mage group but he will get his share of money and you can transfer this money and invest into your mage instead and this is how you participate in the economy as a group so there is no suggestion that i have there are many different setups maybe i'll make another video on that but i will not list all of that here <laughs> and i I think this is kinda it, this is like all of my suggestions, all of my overviews, so we have wanted to show you these tables for crafting, you should be having all of these tables as well, so this is ways of getting D crystals, how many you get, uh, with what's like the price of each crystal, you see 690, you should calculate all of that considering the taxes and stuff like that, you should be having tables like this, if you want to get into economy, it's kind of essential. And you'll be calculating the costs, and this is very important uh, because uh, there will be a decision to be made uh, whether crafting shots from this crystal is more profitable than, than selling the crystal itself. So for example, on this screenshot, SFC is 40 Adana per crystal less profitable than selling the crystal itself. Uh, and for example, BSSB is 3000 Adana more profitable if you just craft the spirit shots comparing to just selling the crystal so you'll, you need to have all of these uh, tables ready if you want to get into the economy so you should learn some of the excel you should learn some filtering uh, referencing preferably how to make uh, checkboxes for the taxes and stuff and this is in general how you want to approach the economy i think this is all i wanted to show yeah, pretty much. I think this is it for the video. I will time link, uh, I will time code everything so that you can uh, return to this video and review stuff uh, because there's lots of information. But this should be it for the Lineage 2 interlude economy review. I reviewed mostly the economy. It's not the, all the mechanics in the game at all. I have simplified lots of stuff, like, like I've I've just said most resources, but there are different types of resources and stuff like that. This is definitely not all of the mechanics in the game, but it should get uh it should be enough to get you started in the economy. And I hope that there'll be somebody who'll be interested in all of this, <laughs> because all I know is that there is no such information in the English speaking internet, at least not in one place. So if you're starting to play Lineage 2 right now. Uh, you'll most likely get completely lost in the economy, like you'll be just buying spirit shots, no idea where they come from, 
no idea how to make sea crystals and stuff like that. And this video should get you started on that at least. And I've simplified lots of stuff about the castle, but if you are a castle owner, you're most likely an experienced player already. So you will know what to do basically. You will have more knowledge about the game. This is very simplified. Castles are even more complex uh, things and they affect the world even more than that. Like they give abilities to the alliances and there's like the entire raiding system with the raiding orbs and how it brings like gear and keys into the economy. I, I've omitted all of that, but it exists as well. So I simplified all the stuff, but hopefully this will be enough. This uh, entire table will be exported to PDF. Uh, I'm not sure how it exports the image layers. I will somehow try to include them as well. Uh, it will all be in the description, uh, as well as this website, very useful website for interlude players. I will include it in the description as well, along with the time codes and stuff like that. This will be it, I think. Good luck.